39-year-old Rebecca Fenton met who she was called the love of her life in 2005. They only knew each other for three months. When they both decided to get married Larry Fenton was a successful architect who was making millions of dollars a year when they both met. Rebecca however was unemployed Larry would treat her very well anything she asked he would provide including luxurious holidays. And a two million pound home he bought for the both of them however on the 3rd of February 2008. Their seemingly perfect life would come crashing down. Rebecca said that she went to their detached home gym and left Larry her home towards the Super Bowl game. However once she returned she saw her husband lying on the floor in a pool of his own blood. He was shot four times she said the first thing she did was check his pulse, then go upstairs to make sure the person who did this wasn't still hiding in the house, only to find out that her entire home has been ransacked after that she went outside to call 911 when police arrived they immediately took her to an investigation room for more questioning. The more evidence, obviously, we can get, the quicker it will be to capture who's done this. We have not given anything, neighbors, to I, anybody. They're, they're, um, the other officers are out there talking to the neighbors and doing canvassing, but they haven't gotten back to me yet. I mean, that he's, I mean, he's definitely gone, that he can't be brought back to life or nothing. At this precise moment, the detectives are treating her like a helpless victim who has just lost her husband. Relationship, there's no infidelity. None. Uh -oh. None. None. We are madly in love with each other. We're still on our honeymoon. And if you can question some other people, they'll tell you that. The more the detectives asked her questions, the more Rebecca knew she was no longer being treated like the grieving wife, and that the investigation would be more focused towards her. We're thinking about this. And both of us are married, and we thought, well, if this happened to us, we don't think we would have left our spouse aside during that time. Especially if we thought there was some hope that we were alive. I got scared. I thought the best thing for me to do was to get out of the house. What were you scared of at that time? Um, what had happened? Um, Call the police, get people there as soon as possible. But I what, what I don't understand though is why you take the time to go upstairs. The danger upstairs, the unknown upstairs. Why would you put yourself in that situation? So the person that ransacked the place probably killed him first, you think? I can't put my in bed. I'm sorry. At this point the main evidence against her were number one she said she rolled him over and put her hands on his neck to check for pulse. However this cannot be true because if she did should have Larry's blood all over her which was not the case number two. She said the house has been ransacked because the people that did this to her husband were burglars however at a close examination detectives noticed that. Nothing had actually been stolen not even the jewelry that was lying around the house or even Larry's wallet which was filled with cash things were not out of shelves. And drawers were open to give the impression that this was done by someone else number three her behavior was very inconsistent. One minute she would be crying hysterically and the next she would be laughing and talking with police officers while she was still at the crime scene of her husband's murder. This made it obvious that she was playing an act and that she wasn't as upset as people first thought. Gun. Firearm. Gun. We did own a gun. Okay. We bought one very, very recently. Where did you guys keep it in the house? It was kept in our bedroom. 
and they're all war. All right. When you were a girl growing up, did your family have guns? Were you ever around them? Anything like that? I really can't remember. My my father hunted bear and all of that. I don't remember being around a gun. Um, I'm never Rebecca claims that the gun that was used to kill Larry was the same gun they both owned it was kept in their bedroom upstairs this means that Larry was shot by someone he knew and trusted to be in his house because to even get to the bedroom the burglars would have to bypass their living room where Larry was sitting and watching TV. Going into a little bit of your personal relationship with him, how long were you all married? We were married three years. Okay. You have a life insurance policy? Um, I think Larry does, yes. Yeah. For how much? I don't know. He's a beneficiary. Um, I think I am because I'm his wife. She also had a motive for the murder. If Larry was no longer living, Rebecca would receive just over $1 million in life insurance. Detectives were convinced that she was indeed guilty however they couldn't arrest her as they didn't have any physical evidence. Directly linking her to the crime the case went cold for a few years until one day something strange happened. Two fires at the same house on Okona Street in Clearwater, separated by less than 30 hours. That's why homeowner Rebecca Fenton says it's been an emotional few days. Indescribable. I feel a little despondent. This can't be happening. Her two million pound home was burned to the ground in a kitchen accident. Rebecca didn't receive any insurance money due to the investigation. And her only way to get the money was to burn the house. This added to everybody's suspicions that she was indeed involved in the murder. He was my Larry. I'm not sure if this is an ending or if it's a beginning, you know? If the Lord is with us, who is against us? Although police had begun to build evidence against Rebecca, what they had still wasn't enough for the state to prosecute. They ideally needed a confession or a witness statement to proceed the breakthrough and the case came in 2014. When cold case detective Mike Hastie was assigned to look over the evidence and began to piece together what he believed. To be anomalies in Rebecca's story, there was an emergence of a witness Alfred Nolan a former boyfriend of Rebecca who she got with right after Larry's death. He claimed that during a dispute between the two of them, she'd once held a knife to his throat and said I'll kill you like I killed Larry. However Alfred Nolan was unreliable because he had a previous history of lying to police and also at the time of the interview. He was in prison therefore he had a motive to lie he would say anything in order to get out or receive a lesser prison. Sentence his statement needed to be verified or they would be essentially useless detective hasty verified Nolan's remarks. But Nolan's nephew and his nephew's girlfriend who both claim that Nolan has told them the exact same story two years prior. New technology for assessing guilt or innocence. 911 right here, emergency. My emergency is I think my husband's been shot, my house has been burglarized, I just walked in, I don't not getting a pulse on him, I just came in from the gym. Okay. Now when you came home, did you find anything in the house? I was in the gym, I was in the gym outside and I was working out in the gym. An innocent person will try and convey the story to you however a guilty person will try and convince you that story Rebecca. Mentioning that she went to the gym should be irrelevant news to her if she came home and saw the horror of her husband lying dead on the floor a person. Who wasn't guilty would be in total shock, they would try to get help as quickly as possible, however Rebecca was more concerned with trying to seem innocent by telling the police her alibi right from the start, so she wouldn't be seen as a suspect after six years Rebecca was invited back to the same interrogation room. Alright. As for you, I don't know if you like nine Dr. Pepper or not, but that's, that's all we have in the, in the fridge right now. Two years ago, uh, I started investigating an unresolved case. Do you know what happened to Larry? Yeah. That's the, Do we it, know what happened? Listen, okay. I know your mind's going 100 miles an hour. Uh, try to just listen. The case was sealed when Mike Hasty located the actual gun that was used to kill Larry it was hidden in her bag in Larry's stolen car along with some of his belongings the gun had Rebecca's fingerprints on it. Two years ago, uh, I started investigating an unresolved case My in Clearwater and it's your husband. So I just want you to listen, okay? Okay. okay. I have a question. I want you to listen. This 
This was found in my this car. This bag is right there. This is Larry's watch. This is the bracelet. This is a handgun, a revolver. This is a little key to a soft-sided gun case. And these are the keys to the Jeep. You're not being honest with me. I'm Thank absolutely being honest. The first thing I said to you was that I'm going to be open and honest okay. with you, and I just want you to listen. I know this is a lot. I know that I've had two years, and I know you've had now ten minutes. Okay. Everything I am telling you, I, I have no, just listen, I have no benefit to lie. I agree. None. I agree. Everything I'm telling you is the absolute truth. These are the contents of the bag. I, I know this, that this mine and well, Barry's well, relationship can be legitimized by talking to people that he had talked to days before, that we had encountered within days before. He just had a performance eval done. He had talked with Terry, talked about how happy he was, so there's a way to legitimize. Okay. But nobody knows what goes on into a private home. Larry and I do not have problems. Okay. And we did, we're not having a bad day. Out of all... Now, as much as I don't understand any of this, especially this, I don't understand this. Don't comment. I just... I'm just downloading this Trust case file. Trust me, the community file. destroyed me over that. I understand. I just am showing you, okay? As in, I wasn't there in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. I didn't pick these books up until 2012. I want to talk to you, but at this point now, I'm starting to feel like you guys are, like I'm being accused of this again, and I do want my attorney present, that's all. But I am saying this, willing to cooperate. I do want to talk to you because the other two wouldn't talk to us. They wouldn't give me any information. Like, when they asked them any questions about Larry, and we were going to come in, but they wouldn't. So I'm grateful you've taken the investigation. I just want Dale sitting there as protection because I haven't been treated good through this whole thing. I had to answer anything that I can, okay. and I do want to work with this. Okay. I'm also having a tough time physically. I haven't seen these pictures in a long time. I'm having a hard time remembering a couple of things, and I'm just... Um, Rebecca, you're under arrest for the murder of Larry Penn. Funny thing is, I've been happy all along.